in order to make any sense of this, we have to rewind a little bit because this is the third act in a five-act story. So we need to go back just a little bit, okay? Now, AM1 was called algebraic manipulation. It was one of the, actually, I think it was the first thing that we started off this year doing. We learnt a few different skills, or we reviewed a few different skills. And um, I want to jog your memory because when you see these, you'll see how they connect to what we're going to do in AM3. Okay? Conveniently, all three of the things that we looked at under AM1, they all start with the letter S. I promise I didn't do that on purpose, that's just what the syllabus says. Okay? The first thing that we looked at, in lots of different kinds of ways, was simplifying things. We learned to simplify algebra. Now there's lots of different ways that you can simplify algebra. Um, the first thing is just with arithmetic. What does arithmetic mean? Arithmetic? Yeah. I suppose arithmetic for us is kind of synonymous to like maths in general, but actually arithmetic is just one little part of it. It's all of those calculations and operations you do. There's four main ones. You add, you subtract, you multiply, and you divide, right? So this is what arithmetic means, and we did all of these things with algebra. You had an expression and you had to add some things together. Um, when you add things together in algebra and they collapse into one thing, what do we call that, by the way? Background. We call it, yeah, like terms. We call that collecting like terms. That was one of the specific phrases that we learned, and we're going to do a bit more of that shortly. Okay. Um, we also, I think I heard the word factorizing. We saw like a bunch of terms and they had something in common. Do you remember that? So we factorized. What's the opposite of factorizing? It's expanding. It's expanding. Very good. So all of these come under the umbrella of simplifying things, right? You get given some algebra and it's a bit of a mess, but you can work with it and make it look better than what it was before. You can make it look simpler. Okay, after simplifying, sometimes you got given an expression and uh, those printing rules, right, they stand for numbers. So we would give you numbers and ask you to put them into that expression. What's that called? Starts with an S. Substitution. Substitution. Very good. This is a really big deal because pretty much every other unit that we've done since AM1 has involved substitution of some kind, right? Like think back to your focus study on driving. You'd need to take like a speed and substitute it into an equation to find out how far you went. Or you'd have to take uh, a time and a number of hours and you'd have to substitute th that into and how many drinks you've had to work out your blood, blood alcohol content okay so that's why this skill was so important because we just keep using it over and over and over again there was one more skill we looked at at AM1 can anyone remember if you get given an equation you have to do something to it you solve solve, solve. very good so we would hand you an equation and there would be a pronumeral in it and we'd say, hey, can you find out what the pronumeral is? What's the solution? Okay. That was AM1 and there are some links from that into AM3 which I'm going to point out in a second. But let's just do it in order. AM2, does anyone remember what the title of AM2 was? Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so algebraic manipulation was this one. Oh. Oh. This was interpreting linear relationships. Oh. Oh. Linear oh, yes. relationships. Does this ring a bell? Okay. Now, Again, we had three main skills. This is not exhaustive, but it gives you the main, main pieces. Yeah. There were three main skills that came under this. Okay? The first thing is these are straight lines. So the, what we did with those was we drew them. We would draw, and when it's on like a set of axes and it's properly done and there are numbers, we don't just call it a drawing or a line. We call it a graph. Or, or a graph. Um, what kinds of, there's two main important features on a graph. Does anyone remember what they are? Okay, so I mean, apart from the actual axes, which are the same every time, but the line itself, right, gradient. it's going to have a gradient. That's, um, that's how steep the line is. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it doing it fast or slow? There's one other thing that you need. Yeah, good. Um, I suppose I'd put intercepts together. The y intercept usually was the one that was the most important one. Okay, okay so we drew graphs. What else did we do under this? Oh, we did like the equations and what's the graph? The equation of the line. Oh, okay, yeah, very good. So when we said, oh, okay, here's, here's a graph, right? Well, it's tied to an equation. And then we'd say, well, what does that equation mean? Like there are letters in here, pronumerals, but what did they stand for? Are they like, say, time and money? Are they um, cost and uh, how many books you sold? All that kind of thing. So what we called that, if you remember, was a model. You take a situation like how much money you were trying to earn, or how fast you were driving, or how many oranges you bought. You take an actual situation, and then you'd use one of these straight lines 
to model it. Okay, does that make sense? Now the very, very last thing we did was a bit tricky. Maybe you want to draw this very briefly over here on the side. Get a set of axes, right? I wonder if you remember some of the specific questions we did. For example, the cost of um, constructing or printing rather like a number of books, like if you were a, a book publisher, I suppose. The cost associated with um, how much money you would make as you recoup those costs when you actually sold books. Do you remember this? Do you remember seeing it? So that's right. Now what we would look at, for instance, is um, something called the break-even point. That's where the costs that you've put in and the amount of money that you're actually getting back, it's where they meet, right? Right there. That's when your costs and your um, profits have exactly lined up. And then after that, the more books you sell, um, you make more and more profit, right? So in other words, what we were doing is we were finding where they meet, we were trying to solve for the point of intersection. Okay? So it's solving again, but it's a different kind. It's not just one equation, it's actually a pair of them. Like this one has one and this one has one. We generally did it visually. We'd say, hey, look at a graph. And you'd have to, like, do you remember you'd get a grid on there and you'd have to do as best as you could to match up where in the lines it was? And that's what we did. Okay? Right. So this sets the stage. Now we're actually going to talk about M3. Now, the titles of these were algebra manipulation and interpreting linear relationships. Now, usually I have to kind of um, twist and turn to make like a nice acronym out of something, but this time I don't have to do it at all because the title AM3 is, uh, well, no, it's just nice to, it just helps you remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's further algebraic oh, skills, skills and Oh, I was close. So, it's fast. Um, I didn't make that up. Now, what are we going to look at in AM3? Um, again, are you getting the hint? It's going to be three main things. One, two, three. Uh, the first thing is we're going to revisit something we looked at in stage five, actually a little bit even in seven, eight, which is indices. Do you remember what indices are? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's the power at the top, right? It's like x squared or x cubed or something like that. Okay. So we're going to come back to those. And everything you did up here with arithmetic, with collecting like terms, each of those, we're going to rehearse those skills, but we're going to involve indices. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, secondly, we're going to work on a skill which I call rearrangement. So. Think of some equations you've seen before, um, even something as simple as this. So we did MM4 recently, and that had circles in it. Do you remember that? Okay. So this is a formula. It's an equation. It tells you the area of a circle if you know its radius. Right? Does that make sense? So you pop radius in, and then you just get out the answer. Okay. But sometimes you don't actually want to find out the area based on the radius. Sometimes you have it the other way around. Right? You have a certain amount of area. This is actually what I needed to do. Do you remember when I made that diagram with the, um, the four circles oh, yeah. on it? Right? I had to work this out. I wanted to know the radius if I knew the area. So you can see this equation is not set up to do that right now. I had to rearrange it. Uh, another one where you've seen this is this equation. This is on your formula sheet. What does it tell you about? This is present and future value. Okay. Now what this equation tells you is future value provided you know what present value and interest rate da, 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 are. But you can rearrange this. In fact, the formula sheet does exactly that to get it the other present way around. Value. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we call this, we give this another fancy name as well. We call it changing the subject. So the subject of an equation, just like the subject of a sentence, is the main thing. In this case, it's area. That's the subject. In this case, it's the future value, right? So that's the important guy that everything else tells you about. And we can change that. We can, we can rearrange it. Okay, lastly. Remember how in AM2 we'd look at a graph like that, and then we would do the best we could, we'd zoom in on our um, laptop screen to try and match up the lines, we would solve it visually, right? But everyone knew that was like not very accurate, really. Like you got as best as you could, but it was never precise, okay? So in this topic under AM3, we're gonna solve um, what you're doing, again, this has a name you've seen before. These are simultaneous equations. Oh. Because simultaneous means what again? What does simultaneous mean? Same same it means at the same time. In other words, where are the graphs existing at the same time? 
but we're going to do better than just looking at a graph, right? That's just going to give us an approximate answer. We're going to do it algebraically, which is good for two reasons. Number one, saves you time because you don't need to draw the things. Number two, it's precise. You get an exact answer out, and that's kind of a bit of a superpower. Okay? Yeah.